the difference between graffiti and art is that graffiti's sole purpose is for writing on the wall and vandalism, in a sense. It's what message you convey with the graffiti. Um, art is art. Art is, you know, it's its own thing. It's its own, you know, it's, you don't have to do anything illegal to do art, you know, whereas graffiti, it pretty much should be illegal. Right now, as far as what it is that I do in, in what it is I do now, a lot of the risk is mostly like health risks because I work with a lot of like, like uh, really crazy paint and stuff like that. You know, I work with spray paint. I work with like a lot of different like materials that are kind of hazardous. So I'm always having to buy masks and change up filters and things of that nature. Um, other than that, if I you know when I do do graffiti, just getting caught, um, I've got a really good lawyer. So, I mean, I, I normally don't trip out too much about it, you know. I'm not, like, out there all the time anymore. And when I'm out, like, outside of Chicago, I had never really had too much of a problem, you know. Like, in Europe, it's almost the norm that people do graffiti and art and stuff like that, street art. Um, out here, it's, it's, it is a little harder, but, like, the rest of the U.S. is not like Chicago in that sense, where it's, like, you're not going to get, like, beat up and practically killed by the cops, you know, for writing graffiti. So when I was like 19, 20, I realized that like, oh, I was making good money here. I could do this, you know, forever and, you know, make pretty decent money. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I ended up moving to Italy and then living in Florence for a summer and, you know, study representational painting because that's why I realized that like, if I want to truly be better at this, I had to learn from the beginning and where the most complicated forms were, and that was in, you know, Florence. And then um, after that, coming back home was, I like, I felt like, oh, I, you know, accomplished something. I came back home to the U.S. and then realized that, like, all the stuff I learned isn't going to, like, help me achieve anything out here. Yeah, I do art for a living, and either they'll take it as, like, I'm some kind of, like, broke dude that lives, you know, in a shithole apartment, you know, and and, uh, and whatever, it's not the case at all. Um, some people that realize, you know, like, the stuff that I actually do, you know, like, sometimes I'll get people know who the hell I am. What it is I'm trying to convey every time I do a piece, I think it, a lot of times I'm trying to make sure that, like, it hits people and it affects them and, it, and they understand what I'm doing with what it is that I'm doing, but at the same time I'm trying to tell a story about myself you know, which is a complicated thing. And people, I think, generally don't understand art. We live in a society in the U.S., you know, where art is a commercial thing and it's a commodity. It's like something that's like, oh, you know, it's like you get it, you know, it's not really a, a, a thing. You know, like I've had people ask me, how do you make money off of art? You know, and it's like, Everything around you is art, you know, every single little thing is art, it's design, it's something, you know, so how do you not get, a, you know, get away with making a living off of doing it, you know, and that's where the sense where it's a commercial sense. You go to Europe where people have their own studios, they do their own thing, and this is like the entire city will be like that. I go to Carrara a lot, which is in Tuscany, and... That's the way it is. They have studios everywhere. You go to Berlin, they have studios everywhere. You know, they don't have that here in Chicago. There's little sections here and there. You know, we have art centers. Pilsen's got like a street or two with some studios and galleries. But realistically, it's a, you know, it's minuscule compared to like what they're doing in other countries, even in Asia. Asia buys I think 65 to 70 percent of the world's art, you know. So it's like the mentality is different here, you know. People are just seeking to make a buck out here, and like I'm not trying to make a buck. I'm trying to make a, I'm trying, I'm trying to make a name, you know. I'm trying to do something that's impactful. Um, a lot of my stuff is really dark, you know, um, and it's not necessarily because of the imagery. It's more so. Um, my usage of colors and stuff. Um, I try to like be realistic about things, you know? And I think that's what my work tries to like push.
push in that sense, where it's like uh, things can be dark but beautiful at the same time, you know? And I think that that right there represents like human nature, you know? You can, you can meet someone that can be a complete asshole, but you find something beautiful about them. You know, and that's the way I want my art to kind of be perceived. Not that it's an ass or anything like that, but it's like dark but enchanting at the same time. And my advice would be to be driven and when you're amongst people that are actually like mentoring you, shut the hell up and just listen to every single little word that they say, even if it's wrong, because you're going to learn from that. You're going to learn from mistakes and you're going to learn from triumphs and you're gonna learn those from other people you know